Hi, I'm Jeff Bonomo and this is Wine, Hops, and Road Stops. Whether you're an experienced craft beer and wine enthusiast or you want to know more about it, this is the show for you. In addition, we'll be visiting some great breweries, wineries, and restaurants in our Road Stop segment. So let's head off to the beer stop in West Hazleton, meet my co-host Alan Gennetti, and introduce you into the world of wine, hops, and road stops. Welcome everyone to the newest show on WYLN, Wine, Hops, and Road Stops. This is our first episode, and we are here on location at the beer stop, and I'm with the owner, Alan. Alan, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. We're ready to sample some good beers? That's the only reason why I show up. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, before we get started, let's talk a little bit about who you are. And you're the owner of the beer stop, but you know, how did you get into uh, the craft beer? Well, fr quite frankly, about 10 years ago when we opened, you couldn't really get a lot of craft beers in Hazleton. So this is my personal refrigerator. Uh, single bottles, and I get to try all different beers. We've had over 10,000 different beers here in the last 10 years. 50 to 60 new beers in coming every day and why drink the same thing every day have a new beer every day that's what i say that's right and you know your stuff now some people may not know their stuff uh so we're going to get into a little uh craft beer 101 Great. in a little bit but first let's do some craft beer news there's some big things happening in the craft beer world that's in the headlines today there are now more than 6,000 craft breweries in the united states the craft beer industry managed to pass another significant milestone in 2017 According to the Brewers Association, the total number of breweries in the United States passed 6,000, with more than 98% of those fitting the Brewers Association's craft beer designation of small, traditional, and independent. Now, what does that mean to the people who love craft beer? Well, one of the things that means is probably within a 20-minute drive of you, you will have a craft brewer making beer right on premises, and you can go in and sample it. There's probably seven or eight within a 20-minute drive of here. 83% of the population in the United States now lives within 10 miles of a local brewery. And they're not just making one style of beer. They're being just like the big guys. Lots of different styles, seasonals, every couple of months, new batches, new styles of beer, and it's a lot of fun. The more the merrier, I say, right? Absolutely. Next up, we have something that I like to talk about. Beer can protect your heart. According to Italian researchers, moderate beer drinkers have a 42% lower risk of heart disease compared to non-drinkers. This is good news. Now for maximum protection, they say keep your consumption to one pint a day at around 5% alcohol by volume. But, you know, still well, good news, right? It's, it's it, it, as if you needed an excuse. <laughs> yeah, I don't need an excuse to have one beer a day, right? Well, one beer a day is, is uh, not a bad way to do it. You have right. dinner, but then what do you do after dinner? Have a beer. Okay, there you go. The Italian <laughs> said it's okay, so I'm all right. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about Craft Beer 101, I like to call it. You know, okay. a, little, a little intro to craft beer and what these abbreviations mean. You got your ABV, your IBU, and you got the other one, uh, the... SRM. SRM, that's a new one. I don't know much about that yeah. one. <laughs> well, the SRM is nothing more than a color scale, which basically brings it from a zero to about a 50 is the scale. Zero would be basically a pure yellow beer, and then a 50 would be a black beer. And then everything kind of falls in between with an amber being in about halfway at about a 25. Because a lot of the bottles now are black bottles, so you don't know what you're looking at inside the bottle. So the brewers have come up with this scale to let you know what's inside. So what about ABV? Now ABV, that's a standard measure of how much alcohol is contained, correct? Correct. Alcohol per volume. Okay. Um, if you go into the, you know, whiskeys, alcohol per volume times two is your proof. So it's just oh, another okay. way of saying, so technically speaking, most beers are around 5%. That means they're 10 proof. And some of the beers get up to 20 and 30%, uh, which means they're 40 proof. Yeah, those yes. are the ones I like to call one and done. Yes. <laughs> and finally, the IBU. IBU is probably the most important one. That is the International Bitter Units. There you go. And so most people, particularly when you're trying it for the first time, oh, that's too bitter. I don't like that. I like, you know a softer, lighter beer. If you pay attention to the IBUs, the lower the number, the less bitterness. And that scale goes from zero to, I think, 2,500 is the highest. That's a, that's a real bitter beer, isn't it? Yeah, but you're not, <laughs> most beers are within the one to about 70 range with a few up into about 150. After that, there's very few that the brewers are just kind of trying to outdo themselves with different batches to 
make it impressive that they can put so much IBUs into a beer. So for example, an IBU, a higher IBU would be like a, an IPA, pale ales would be higher than say like a, a lager. A yeah. lager. Or Correct, yes. Okay. Well, we'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors and when we get back, we're going to sample some of these beers and we're going to check out the different IBUs, ABVs and SRMs. Sounds good. Okay, we'll be right back on Wine, Hops and Roadstocks. To wine hops and road stops. I'm here at the Beer Stop in West Hamilton with Alan, the owner of the Beer Stop. And if you like what you see so far on the show, check us out on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash wine hops road stops. Okay, we're gonna start uh, sampling some beers. What do we have here today? Okay, well we have kind of a range of all eight different beers and kind of a range of different uh, of the IBUs. Starting with the lowest, UFO White Ale. Comes at a uh, scale of 10. And the UFO White is a great beer to try if you haven't tried craft beers before. If you drink Bud Miller Coors, this is just a phenomenal beer to start with. Um, all my friends and neighbors who are Bud Miller Coors guys, this is always the first beer I give them. Now, Alan, what I'm holding here is uh, looks pretty light. Yes. Now, that's because the, the IBUs are low. Yeah, correct. Yeah, this is an IBU of about 10, and which is going to give you a very low on the bitterness scale. And it's a great beer to first try if you're just getting out of the... Bud Miller Coors world and into the craft beer world. And let's just say, there's nothing wrong with that, but there's more to beer than just Absolutely. The, big, the big ones. These beers, it's rich, it's full, it's creamy, things that you wouldn't really associate with chugging down a Budweiser or a Coors. <laughs> so, okay, now what the proper way to drink it, the proper way to sample this beer. Sample, always take a little sniff as you're drinking it or beforehand. As you smell things, it is basically, your nose is telling your taste buds what to expect. This is a really good beer. It's nice and crisp. Nice. And that's it. Crisp. It's uh, about 4.8% alcohol. So it's a good session beer if you would like more. And it's also good if you are get done mowing the lawn. Nice, easy drinking beer. Next up, we have the Big Wave from Hawaii. Now this one is going to come up with an IBU of around 20. So you're getting into a little bit more hops, a little bit more bitterness. And at a point, your bitterness will start turning into crisp and clean as opposed to bitterness. And, and this one you can even tell in just the smell of the much more hint of fruit. Yeah, there's, a, there's some kind of uh, citrus fruitiness. Yep, you get the citrusness, this. which is masking itself with the IBUs and the bitterness. But again, another really easy drinking beer and not a bad beer to start off with, just getting into the craft beer world. Now we're gonna move on to something a little bit darker. Yes. Now, what, what is this guy This here? is the Schmaltz Messiah Brown. A brown ale is going to give you much more malts than the other beers will. As you can tell, much darker, but yet we're only going up to about 35 on the IBU scale. So you'll get a little bit more on the bitterness, but not as much as you might expect. It's a good dark, one of your first good dark beers to try would be a brown, and this fits the bill nicely. Yeah, and there's a nice, uh, there's a nice presence of malt here. And there's really maltiness, a little bit of yeah. nuttiness yeah. even to it. Not uh, not much hops or anything like that. No. Because no. I know some people aren't hop heads. I'm a hop head. Correct, yep. It's, it's, it's a good beer to be drinking as you're just getting into the darker, fuller beers. After that is the Edmund Fitzgerald. Uh, this is one of my personal favorite beers. It's a porter. Mm -hmm. I've had this before. It comes in at 37 IBUs and 6% alcohol and a lot of really rich chocolate tones to mm -hmm. it. And actually, believe it or not, this is a very good dessert beer. If you're having some chocolate cake or something like that, it pairs really well with that. Yeah, it's gone. It's gone already. It's mm -hmm. kind of not how you're supposed to sample it, but that was a really good beer. It's really good. It's really <laughs> rich. It's really, you know, getting into that nice balance of heaviness, and you're getting into a little bit more into the serious craft beer drinks. Now, the next one I'm not familiar with. Now, who is this guy here? This is Six Points out of New York. Uh, this is Six Points is, believe it or not, in Pennsylvania, a little bit more difficult to find. Um, and this is their lager. Now, Tesla is uh, the name of it, and Six Points really kind of puts a little bit more hops in all of their beers. Even though you think lager, you think Yingling lager, this is a much different beer than that. This is the craft version of a lager. So this is a lager, but a little bit more hop profile Correct. to it? This is a 49 on the IBU scale. So you're already really jumping up in there. And you can taste it. You can taste you it, can you taste can smell, when you smell it, you can just smell the floralness of the hops. Oh yeah. 
So this one, as you start drinking it, this is one that if you're not really ready for the craft beer world, this is the one where you're first really gonna start telling the bitterness of a beer. Now oh. we're saying bitterness, but that's not a bad thing to some people. It is not, it is not. That's a good thing. It's a bitterness what they call a bite. Now your favorite. This is, this is uh, Founders Breakfast Stout only comes out once a year. Um, I buy enough of it to keep it at the store. So we have it 365 days a year. Um, it's a double chocolate coffee oatmeal stout. Um, it's the equivalent, I say, of like comfort food. It's like mashed potatoes and gravy. <laughs> <laughs> this has IBUs of 60, and it comes in at an 8.3% alcohol. So we're getting, as we're getting darker, we're also getting bigger Correct. as far as the alcohol by volume goes. So yes. watch yourself while you're drinking these. Mm -hmm. You can pound down this easier than you can pound down this. Yes. So. For every one of these you have, it's like having two of those. And you just smell the chocolate, the oh, coffee. Yeah. That's nice and thick. Mm -hmm. It's a great finish to it. Mm. Like, I'm getting equal amounts of coffee and chocolate to mm -hmm. it. It's really, really good. And particularly in the stouts, you're going to find there's not going to be as much fizz in the beers as you will with like the UFO whites and the golden ales. So a little bit less carbonation. A little bit less carbonation, and uh, that's on purpose. Next, we have one of the seasonals out right now that everybody loves, the Trogues Nugget Nectar. Um, this has an IBU of 93. This is a big seller for you? This is one of the biggest sellers, yeah. Uh, people look forward to this all year round. It's usually only available for about two to three weeks in the year, and then it's all gone after that. And you can see it's just a, a red tone. You can really kind of smell the hops in that as, oh, yeah. as you're almost, as a, almost a floral, almost like a, a spicy flower floral. It has so. a great flavor to it, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is one of my favorites. A Trogues never really steers me around. They're pretty much Absolutely. really, really good. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, Trogues doesn't have a bad product, quite no. frankly, that I've ever had. There you go, Trogues. <laughs> Shout out to Trogues. Mm. But in here, you can definitely taste the bitterness of the beer. You can taste the bitterness of the hops. And you're definitely jumping up into the elite of the microbrews. And now we're getting to the elite of the micro. Yes, this would be one. Of, this is one of the rarer, rarer beers. Uh, this is the Dogfish 120, which comes with an IBU of 120. Guess how many IBUs there? 60 minute has. 60. There you go. Dogfish got me into craft beers. It was one of the first craft beers I've ever had was a Dogfish. They may, they're solid beers. Dogfish likes to experiment a lot. Yes. They really do, and yeah. they're always coming out with something new. Their Dogfish 60 minute, 90 minute is is just a standard. Ground fare. zero. Yes. Ground zero for me. For, for hop heads, yes. Yeah. And, and this one, oh boy. This comes in at 21% alcohol, or 42 proof, if you will. So, Ooh. it has a much different bouquet to it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and when you drink, I mean, you can even feel the alcohol burn as it goes down. Now, um, here's the thing about Dogfish Head 120. It's good to age that beer, because once when you start aging that, and you know this, yeah. I'm pretty much talking to, talking to the audience, because he already knows this. <laughs> he has like a, a little section of aged beers back here. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I like to get a Dogfish 120, age it for a year or two. Mm -hmm. And then when you drink it, it's sweeter. Yep. It's a little bit less bitey. Mm -hmm. It's a great beer. Age them. It's yeah. Excellent. When, when uh, beers are bottle conditioned, you can age them for 5, 10, 20 years sometimes. And the beer will completely change over time. So we just did a sampling of Trogue's Mad Elf. Mm -hmm. And we had Medal from 10 years ago, from five years ago, and this year. And if you didn't know it, you would think that you were drinking three completely different beers. All these beers here, which ones would do well aging? Usually you need higher alcohol to age the beers. So your white ales at like 4.4, 4.8%, they're not gonna age well. Mm -hmm. You need more things in the beer. So I'm thinking probably the last three. Last three? The, the breakfast stout, the nugget nectar could probably do with a couple of years of aging, and the 120, Quite frankly, that could probably age for 10 years. So there you have it. There's your IBU scale from next to nothing to, oh my God. <laughs> we'll be right back on Wine Hops and Road Stops. We're gonna go to Four Blooms and Drums for our road stop of this episode. Don't go away. Welcome back to Wine, Hops, and Road Stops on WYLN-TV. 
If you like what you see, facebook.com slash wine hops and road stops, our Facebook page. Let us know what you want us to talk about in the world of craft beer, wine, and good food. Speaking of good food, we're gonna travel right down the road here in Drums, Pennsylvania to Four Blooms Restaurant. That's our road stop for today. Today's road stop is Four Blooms, a beautiful upscale dining establishment on Hunter Highway, Route 309 in Drums. I met with Chef Aaron to chat a little bit about how he would describe this place and what makes Four Blooms more than just another restaurant. I would describe it as an upscale dining experience with a casual atmosphere. We um, have comfort food as well as, you know, steaks and lobster and seafood. We have burgers, stuff like that. Everybody can enjoy. And while the menu is varied, they have everything from simple fare to dishes to show off the chef's more creative flair, like the ones he made for us. Today I made some pan-seared scallops um, over some bacon and corn risotto with a crustacean juice. So it's the juice is made from uh, lobster shells and shrimp shells. It's uh, basically like a reduction. And uh, I also made um, some grilled shrimp tossed in a uh, creamy, sweet and spicy sauce over a cool um, kale slaw. So you have your little hot and cold components there. It's really nice. And uh, I also made our filet mignon. We have a six ounce option and a nine ounce option. Um, it comes with Bernays sauce. It's a classic sauce made from an emulsion of egg yolks and butter and some herbs. And uh, just paired that with some potato puree and some grilled asparagus. Now after seeing Chef Aaron create delicious dishes like these, well, I knew he couldn't be new to the restaurant game and he's not. And like many chefs I've spoken to, his love for great food could be traced all the way back to his childhood. I'm from uh, Wisconsin originally. My dad worked in the restaurant industry. So um, So you were kind of born into it already. I was, yeah. We were, he's always cooking, grilling out on Sundays and making brats. And well, the restaurant business is a hard business, so you have to love it, right? Right. You have to love food and love making food for people. If there's one thing on the menu that you made today for us, what would be your favorite? Um, I really enjoy the scallop dish. Um, that's why I made it for you today to show off. It's uh, one of my favorite dishes. It's just something about the, um, the creaminess and the, the components of having the bacon and the risotto go with the seafood flavors, and it's just really awesome. It sounds, it sounds wonderful. I can't wait to try it. So that's something that's personal to you that you brought here when you came to Fort Bloom. Right. And being from Northeastern Pennsylvania, I know when the weather gets warm, I cannot wait to get out and dine outside. And Four Blooms has a beautiful outside patio just for that purpose. We have a very large uh, outdoor patio. It seats almost 100 people. And there's some really beautiful tables out there that have a nice fire piece center and um, full service bar. And we'll be serving everything on the menu out there once the weather comes. We're open for dinner service um, Tuesday through Saturday and that's 5 p.m. till 10 p.m. and then Sunday we do a really nice unique brunch and that is from 10 a.m. till 3 p.m. We are open for events and special parties. We have the very nice piano bar and we can accommodate almost up to 100 people in our events room so we can do large parties, small parties. We have a couple of other um, side party rooms where if you have you know 15, 20 people we can accommodate a nice private dinner and lunch for you. Thank you chef, thank you for your time. I'm heading to the bar. Here we are behind the bar with Jessica, the bar manager. You got a great selection of craft beers, which I like. Great selection of cocktails. Tell me all about what you have here. Well, we really wanted to focus on the Four Blooms aspect, so the floral and the natural. So most of our cocktails have freshly squeezed juices. We garnish with flowers. Um, we don't want to use a lot of things that are processed. We like to use our own house-made syrup. So we, one of our cocktails is a rose and rye, and it has a rose-infused simple syrup in it with the rye whiskey. And, and, you do that and we do that in-house. Yes, that is it's not coming in off a truck. We're making it here. Oh, that's yes. Great. One of our cocktails that we'll be bringing back in the spring is a lavender Paloma, and it has a lavender simple syrup in it. Um, and it's garnished with lavender buds. So, I mean, what, what says flowers more than actual flowers, well, you know? <laughs> we also wanted to go more towards the high-end side of things. So our well is not your typical well. Um, all of our brands are a little bit more on the, the high end. And we're always asking customers what we could bring in for them, what we could get for them. So even if you're asking so, for a well, yeah. you're getting something great. Yeah, if you're, getting, yeah, if you're asking for a well, you're, you're actually getting Tito's or Dewar's oh. or Beefeater's. Um, and we're always it's looking for... <laughs> 
we're always looking for feedback from our customers. So if you, you know, tend to take up a spot at our bar frequently and, you know, maybe we don't have something you're looking for, we're always more than happy to get that in to accommodate the customers that we have. Keep and you have, the, you have the usuals as far as beer goes, right? Yes, yeah, we have all your staples and then I try to pull in seasonal and also I want to listen to the customers and see what they're asking for. You want more IPAs? Okay, we'll get you some more IPAs. That whole know? thing could be IPAs. If <laughs> But then again, You're not alone there. Yeah, okay, <laughs> see? I like this girl. It's great. And you also have some, uh, some ciders on tap, too. Yes, yeah, the Flannel Mouth Blake's Hard Cider is great. It's a little different. Um, it's not a brand that I think a lot of people know about. So that's another thing. We're actually going to start a rotating tap. We're going to start pulling from local breweries. Great. So try something new. Give, uh, give people something different to try. Jessica here is going to make me her favorite cocktail here, which is? It is a cherry vanilla Manhattan. So we're going to start off with Crown, uh, Crown Royal Vanilla which is wonderful because it's not a super sweet vanilla, but you get that vanilla flavor in it um, without it being like overkill. Then we're gonna do a Dolan uh, Rouge Vermouth. It's a driver or it's a sweet vermouth, but it is, there's a little bit more depth to it than a lot of the typical vermouths you find out there. Has a little bit more flavor. And then we're gonna dash in uh, our orchard cherry liqueur. We're gonna top that with some cherry bitters. And then typically you would stir Manhattan, but because of the liqueur in here and the vermouth and the whiskey, I like to just do a back and forth with it to combine everything. You don't want to shake it, you don't want the air in it or anything, but you do want something. I'm gonna grab a chilled martini glass and we're gonna pop a Luxardo cherry in there. They don't have all the chemicals and all the, they're not bright, uh, bright red. <laughs> And that would be our cherry vanilla Manhattan. Four Blooms is located at 668 North Hunter Highway, Route 309 in Drums. For more information, visit them at fourblooms.com. And that is this episode's Road Stop. Wine Hops and Road Stops. It's been great hanging out with you, Alan, sampling some great beers. Thank you very much. That's all the time we have. So make sure you come to the Beer Stop in West Hazleton for all your craft beer needs. Absolutely. Try a new beer today and every day. Cheers to you, our first episode. Salud. Thank you very much. We'll see you again on Wine, Hops, and Road Stops. I thought we were going to shoot this at earlier than we did. Uh, something I want to ask you. You want to talk about Star Wars? You don't? No? Oh, no, I'm a, I'm, no, I'm a Star Wars guy no matter how you I know. Do. I saw you I that actually, night. We went to. I have a lightsaber pizza cutter. Ooh. I've got a lightsaber uh, I'm rear, saying, rear I'm, windshield wiper. I'm saying the newest one, though. I don't know, how did you leave feeling it? How did you leave feeling? I liked it. Okay. I liked it. We're not going to talk about that. There, there, there are a couple of cool, oh. cool scenes in it, but you know. My childhood was ruined. Well. I don't know. I watched it. I was like, I don't know what's going on. And the blue milk thing? Well. Uh, maybe, maybe next time I go see Star Wars, I should bring some beer with me. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you go see with a 10-year-old, you get a much different version. My daughter, this was her favorite movie of all of them. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. being grow, grow up, grow, you know, growing up with it, you know, you kind of have more questions of why is this or why It wasn't that? my Luke Skywalker, man. I don't know. No, <laughs> no, no. And I want to know why don't they just, you know, take the uh, bombers and hyperspeed closer to the ships. Why do they have to spend 20 minutes? We, we, could, we could spend an hour on this. This could be a whole episode. <laughs> if only Star Wars made beer. They don't do that. No, but they are opening the Star Wars Cantina down at the um, uh, Disney Studios uh, next year. Hey, just I'm, there for, I'm there for opening day already. Just in time to take my daughter, all right. Yeah, we're planning a trip in a couple of years. I hope so. they play that song the entire time. <laughs> 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 One more time! Oh. <laughs> yeah, you know what? This was um, this was pretty good. I'm uh, all their stuff. You know what? You know what I think it is? Average. It's the can that threw me. Because mm -hmm. it looks like uh, an energy an energy drink. West Coast, everything is cans. Ah, uh, there's the West Coast one. Yep. Well, no, it's East Coast, but everything coming out of the West Coast mm. and they're in New York. Oh, okay. So California goes, New York follows, ah. and they sandwich the rest of the country in between. How about that? <laughs>